Hey guys, this is Eric Wagner with Wagner Racing, and today's video is E85 did make less power. You read that correct, not more, but less. And before you start commenting, please watch the whole video because I'm gonna try to explain why I think it happened and we'll go from there. So, and you're like, why do I have heads here that I'm showing when I wanna see dyno graphs? I don't wanna hear you talk about cylinder heads for this. Totally get it. I'm gonna show you the actual dyno graph. Absolutely am. And this is it from two different engine combinations. This was on the same engine, the same day, and you're gonna get to see that. But I have these here to try to explain what I think's happening with it. For instance, this is the trick flow head that was from my last video that many of you said, hey, you did it wrong when you said the valve closes and it's not the same as you putting your hand over the port. You're correct, but you know what it is the same as me putting my hand over the port? Closing the throttle. That does the same thing. But anyway, that is a part, I think the reason why, this engine that I'm, my dyno mule didn't make more power with the 85. So first we'll talk about the combination. I'll get right to the dyno results. Then we'll talk about why I think. So the combination itself is a 406 small block Chevy. It had 11.4 compression ratio with the AFR 227 competition port heads. Um, they're full CNC ported, obviously, and they feel like 320s. The... Uh, the camshaft's a solid roller from Urson. It's a 260 duration on intake, 270 on exhaust, a 108 lobe separation. It's 685 lift on both intake and exhaust. The intake manifold that was used on this one was the Edelbrock 2970 that I had port matched, well not port matched. I had taken out the clover leaf on the top and also blended the divider. You could see this in that intake in previous videos as well. When it was on gas, it was tested with a 1050 Dominator, a Holley Sportsman carburetor, two-circuit deal. Nice carburetor, been working great for all this stuff. When it went to E85, a customer had actually sent in the carburetor. It was a Da Vinci 1050 as well, but it was an E85 as, as, as well. So did I measure the Venturi and stuff to make sure they were the same for carburetor carburetor? No, I'm just trusting that both said they were 1050s, so we're gonna trust that both are 1050. By the way, do not take this as Da Vinci being a bad carb builder during any of this video. That car was made, built for a 540 big block Chevy, not for a 406 small block Chevy. The demands are a little bit different, obviously. Um, even though it's the same CFM, your tuning and your circuitry is probably gonna be a little bit different. Uh, although, in my experience, that 1050 I run, I've ran it on the 406 and ran it on the 540 and it took no changes. But I just don't want you thinking that he's a bad car builder. That is not it at all. That had nothing to do with it. I totally believe that. So anyway, talk about the heads later. Let's get to the dyno results. By the way, if you're having a hard time seeing this, what you can do is instead of just watching a little thumbnail on your phone, you could actually click on the video. Yeah, you have to make it through an ad. And I know it feels like the ads are getting longer. I get that too. But the picture does get bigger. Or I'm gonna put a link in my description on this video. You can actually purchase the book that has all these dyno graphs and also has the flow sheets and not just that, but all the dyno results from the entire test session from the small block Chevy. And that's available. It's pre-order. I'm going to send it to the printer probably this week and then they'll be available next week. I'm only going to print 10 more than I have orders for. After that, oh well. Um, it'll only be available in PDF. If you live outside the United States, you could purchase the PDF. Here are the numbers. So if you look at this pink line here, this is gas. And by the way, you're asking, well, what gas did you run? It's 91 octane and a splash of 110. What I mean a splash of 110 is it's a 50, 15 gallon drum and about a gallon of that's 110. The rest is 91 octane out of a local gas station. It's not even pure gas. I think it's the, um, they call it E10, so it's 10% ethanol anyway. That's what our gas is. So before someone says, hey, your E85 is cheaper, Mm, not really, because this E85 was race E85. So this was not just the regular E85 you get from the pump gas station, say at your local Casey's or whatever. This was actually the race E85, and this one cost $8.10 a gallon. Compared to this, obviously, it's much, much cheaper. So this was a pump E85, true E85, wanted to get the best results. This is what it did. So the pink, as you can tell, is the gas, and then the black line is E85. As you can tell, besides the very hit, which you can kind of take that off as just the way the dyno grabs, it's never better at all. And I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of your comments that you're getting ready to put right now. One, did I add more timing? No, here's the reason why. 
And by the way, it doesn't make that much more power, like three. This is a difference of almost 10. But let me explain why. When the carburetor went on, I probably should have had them abort the pool right off, but I didn't. Because right when I made the pool, the air fuel ratios before we were like 12.8, 13.0, it went to 13.4. So a little scary, but then I'm like, eh, whatever. I'll run it. And I know that I would never recommend somebody doing it, but the mule, I abused it. I, I truly do. So that was the first pull. Take it off, put more jets in. And I think I went up dramatically because I was just wanted to swing for the fences, just get it out of the way. I don't want to keep making little changes. So I went up to like, I don't know, I think six jet sizes bigger all the way around. Did it again, and it was still like 13.2. So it only gained two-tenths of an air fuel ratio. It gained three horsepower. So then I'm like, all right, now I'm really getting frustrated. Changed jets again. This time I went to the biggest jets that was in this BLP kit, and it was the biggest. And I don't even remember what they are, but it was the biggest that was in that one. And the air fuel ratio still stayed at 13.2. So chances are it wasn't pulling any more fuel from the jet. It probably needed an air bleed change to pull more from the jet, but I didn't have any air bleeds. Also, this wasn't exactly my carburetor, so I don't feel like messing with someone else's that even though they let me borrow it for the steel and mess up what they're doing. So it's easy to change a jet. I mean, it's easy to change an air bleed too, but I just wasn't going to mess with it. It was also a three circuit, so I would have had to change probably two of them. I will say they could, the air fuel ratio were consistent all the way through. Um, but anyway, the 13.2, it, it didn't change. So even when I added the other jet, so I'd added, like I said, I, now I swing for the fences. I think I went up eight on the second go around. So a total of 14 jet set changes sizes all the way around it didn't do anything so even though it had bigger jets the torque never went up so some of you were wondering on the 85 stuff usually and the same thing goes with methanol usually whenever you add more fuel to it it will at least make more torque if it doesn't make any more power this didn't make any more torque and it didn't make any more power it just gained the same so i was i was thinking man i just don't think the 85 is for this engine and before I know already some of you are getting ready to comment or probably already have it's because you have low compression ratio I'm gonna hold you off for a second because I'm gonna describe that too but back to the timing no I didn't add more timing because in all fairness 13.2 also got people commenting right now E85 needs to be at the 8 or 9 air fuel ratio I'm on a gasoline scale the gasoline scale if you're 12.5 on gasoline you, you need to be 12.5 on E85 12.5 on methanol if you're doing Lambda, then it's the 5.5 five or 4.5 on methanol and eights, and then 12 and a half. We're on the gasoline scale. They all should read the same at 12.5. If you don't understand that, then it have to be a whole other video, and I'm sure someone else has it out there. So, but anyway, it was lean. There's no way to argue it's lean. Has it the leanest? Did you run the gas carburetor that lean before? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I have had the gas carburetor at 13.2 and made full pulls and did great. Uh, um, made good power. So, and did I change jets from that? No, because I was like, ah, I don't care. I'm just going to go into the next combination. There's no sense to keep messing with jetting and engine and taking up more time on the dyno before I could switch to a different intake or head combination. So, point being is, 13 twos though, I don't really feel like adding more timing at that point. And by the way, the timing was at 36 degrees. It's been 36 degrees since the beginning of the small block Chevy dyno mule anyway. So, adding more to it, it didn't, that would, if it was on the borderline of being dangerous, it for sure would have been dangerous adding more timing. However, I do have some dyno experience with this, so I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a second here. This is the 355 that came out of the S10. This engine made 580 on gas. Pump gas just like what you saw there. I tested this one on E85 and on methanol. And if you go, that's on a separate video. You can watch this one. I'm pointing this out for a good reason. This one, I actually did try timing and it did nothing. It gained like one or two horsepower. That's it. So went up two degrees, one or two horsepower. Definitely not worth it. And this was also not even tried on E85. I also tried on methanol. So the point being is no, the timing does not gain you what they say. That's when, when you hear people say that, it's because they probably heard it on the internet, but they did not test that. So I'm telling you, the timing might have added a little, but it wouldn't have even have still caught, it wouldn't have caught up to what the gas did. And right away, some of you are like, well, wait a minute, E85's king. That 355 I showed you, you can go back and watch that video. 
On that one, the E85 actually made 10 more horsepower, so this would have been reversed. And it actually had a bigger, through here, the torque curve was higher. So on that engine, it gained torque and it gained just a little bit of horsepower. And on methanol, it gained more torque and gained just a slight bit more peak horsepower than the E85. That engine, by the way, is 11.9 compression ratio. So it's not that far off from this. It's about a half a point more compression ratio. So why am I bringing this up? And why are these heads over here? Because of this. Why did that happen? Okay. Because I don't knock E85. Right away, instantly, you guys are thinking, I'm hating on E85. I'm not. Because it really is, I have never seen it not gain on a boosted application. Absolutely. For instance, my S10 itself, on race gas, it made 741. This is only five pounds of boost. It ain't got hardly any boost from the torque storm. Went to E85 and instantly gained um, 45 horsepower just from E85. Um, and that's with less timing. And five pounds of boost is nothing. So because it cooled the intake chart. So E85 is absolutely and always a win for a boosted application. NA though, that's where we're starting to get a different thing. Now this is lower compression ratio. I already got people I know commenting that, got it. But usually it still makes more torque. This case, it just didn't. So I'm not knocking 85 because I really do think on certain combinations, NA, it absolutely makes more power. But this is the reason I believe that on this combination, the E85 didn't make more power. And now this part of the whole video is speculation. This right here is a set of Pro Max heads, but they're essentially legend, allegedly a copy of an AFR head. And although the camera view is not the greatest, this is the 215s, by the way, that ran on the Dyna Mule. That's the wing facing that direction towards the wall. This is the same thing that's on the AFR 227 that's on the engine now, has the same feature where it's facing exactly that way. Or, just like I said in that last video, this is the trick flow with the vein facing that way. Now, I have heard, and I hate being a parrot, but I do trust the opinion of this person, a really good professional head porter. I had to ask him long ago about why the vein should face this. Why did they have the veins facing this way? It seems like it helps airflow. And he goes, you know what it does? It does do absolutely do that, but it's horrible for wet flow. And he actually had dyno chart showing a difference between methanol with that wing and it destroyed power with the wing facing uh, that direction. Because on gas, you're not putting near as much fuel through the port as you would with E85 or methanol. When the wing faces this way, it's a great air trick, but it does not do good for fuel. So this is speculation on my part, although he kind of backed that up. The fuel with that wing falls out of suspension and if it's out of suspension, it ain't burning. And that might explain why even though I'm adding jet, it ain't getting any leaner because it's not atomizing, it's just raw fuel. So it's not doing what it should be doing, which is burning and making power. It just isn't because that vein right there that the AFR 227 competition port has, the race port, by the way, is straight. I think that's what's causing it. And that's a speculation of why, my, why I think it made less power. I know some of you are like, no, it's totally related to compression. But again, back to that 355, it has a half point compression and it made 20 foot pounds more torque and 10 more horsepower than the gas. But why? Did it do it on that one? Because that head that's on the 355 is the Dragon Slayer and its vein is exactly like this. Cause this is my CNC ported Dragon Slayer. Yes, it's dirty cause I gotta clean it up. But if you notice it's straight and it faces exactly that way. So the, the air and the fuel comes this way. It's not a trick of the device to make it flow a little bit more. So what happens is if air fuel comes better, it's probably better for wet flow. And that that's exactly what like the vein is facing on the 355 and I think that doesn't fall out of suspension as bad as that does. Although this one direction flows better on the bench than that. And that's why I think the E85, this engine, particular engine combination, didn't do as well on E85. Because even though that's a cool vein and it really does make it, things flow better, and I probably might even make more power on gas, when you add more fuel, I don't think it helps. I think it makes things worse. That's totally speculation. 
Now, there's one thing, that, because I hate just being a guy that speculates. I hate that. So if you're wondering why this head is here, it's because, well, I was going to have this. This is the Pro Max Project X 215. It's what was ran on the Dyna Mule. This thing made like 615 or something horsepower with this. these heads, nice heads. I had done a CNC port for Pro Max, and I left that vein facing exactly that way. But this is a new model I came up with. And as you can tell, I've straightened it out a lot. So it went from, which I don't know how well the camera can capture that. That way, the straightening it out. Now, can I get it all the way straight? No, there's just not material to make it like that. But I wanted to see if I make it like this, if it would make more power than the one that I have, the 235. Because actually, this is the same CC. I straightened the vein. There are a little bit of different things in the port as well. But I really do want to see if this would make more power. I had sent it off to a guy to get digitized, but things just didn't work out. I'm hoping I can build up some more funds and send this off to be digitized, and then I'll have the rest of the head cut, and we could actually have a comparison between the vein facing, like this design, versus having it straightened more, and how that might affect both E85 and methanol. So, but don't think from this video that the only reason why I'm telling you this is to knock E85, I'm truly not. Um, definitely in boosted, it's a win. But in an NA deal, not always. That That's what the should be, not always. Sometimes it wins like it did on my 355, but not always. And before someone says, well, I'm running it because it's cheaper, I can get, and this doesn't even require this, that this dyno mule only run, needs 91 octane, really. I can get 91 octane for three something a gallon, but you're like, okay, you ran race fuel. If I can get race fuel for like $8 a gallon, it's the same price as race E85. And you're going to say, well, I can get pump E85 for cheap, cheaper. True, but you never know what you're going to get. So if you're on the ragged edge as far as compression or timing, <laughs> you never know. It's, you really are taking a gamble. So I just want to point that out there. But I get why you're like, well, it's cheaper. I truly get that whole statement but it's only cheaper for pump and it's not always consistent. Anyway, hopefully you guys got something out of this video. I'm sure I can hear the hate comments coming in through now. Please do not bash DaVinci because I know his carburetors are amazing. So I've seen several combinations of customers of mine that are running and they're doing flawlessly. It has nothing to do with the carburetor. I really do think it's more vein related, but again, that's just speculation. Guys, remember I am definitely not a Superman. I do not port cast iron heads. You guys take care.